Here is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. It needs a new screen. Precisely, the other screen is bad. It doesn't turn on, but the inner screen is still good and working. The issue with the inner screen is that the screen protector that Samsung installed on this screen is starting to peel off, but today I'm going to replace the other screen of this Galaxy Z Fold 3. Before starting, I started to clean the other screen with alcohol and I decided to install some heat resistant tape on the hinge mechanism area. The first step is to heat the front screen in order to start the removal process of the other screen. The heat resistance tape is going to protect the hinge mechanism area in order to avoid having too much heat going into that area. I heated the other screen for a total of 40 seconds while the heat gun was on the highest setting. You can heat the other screen with a common hair dryer. It is going to work but it is going to take a little bit more time because it doesn't have the same power as a heat gun. After pulling on the screen with my suction cup, I started to feel that the middle of the screen is the area that is weak. The middle of the screen started to get separated separated from the frame of the device so I inserted a guitar pick on that area. I continue hitting the front of the device for at least 20 seconds before I started to work with the guitar pick. After inserting the first guitar pick when the screen is at a good temperature you can start removing the screen. To do that you will need to take the guitar pick and run it to the sides of the device in order to start the separation of the screen from the frame of the device. I have done the side that is close to the hinge mechanism and after that I started to insert another guitar pick on the screen in order to have more leverage in the removal process of the screen. So currently everything is going well and I decided to check the inner screen to make sure that it is still working and alive. This is the new screen that I'm going to install on this Galaxy Z Fold 3. Unfortunately this screen didn't come with a double sided tape and it doesn't have a pre-installed double sided tape. Continuing with the removal of the screen I started to hit the screen again because it had cooled down a little bit. Whenever it get a little bit difficult to move the guitar pick and detach the screen from the body of the device you can simply add more heat it is going to help you remove the screen safely and more efficiently currently i'm using the green scalpel in order to help me detach the screen from the body of the device because this area of the screen is broken and it is still attached to the body of the device using a flat metal tool is very good if the guitar pick doesn't work but you need to be careful because it can leave some scratch on the body of the device so everything that i I'm doing with this Galaxy Z Fold 3 applies to the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and the Galaxy Z Fold 5 because they essentially have the same screen and the same dimension for the screen. Also one thing to note is the front facing camera which is at the top of the device. You need to be careful in that area not to leave any scratch on the front facing camera. If it happens you will have to replace the front facing camera. I can see currently 80% of the screen is completely removed out of the body of the device. The only part of the screen that is still attached to the frame is the bottom portion of the screen. The bottom portion of the screen is still attached to the frame because of the broken screen that is a little bit more difficult to remove with a guitar pick. I advise that in this case you should use a flat metal tool or a flat blade in order to help you remove the screen that is still attached to the body of the device. Currently the whole screen is completely detached from the body of the device. We can see we have a big flex cable that goes on the top middle of the device and connect to the motherboard. So the removal process of the screen on a Galaxy Z Fold 3, Galaxy Z Fold 4 and Galaxy Z Fold 5 should be exactly the same. If your other screen is completely broken, you can simply use a heat gun or a common hair dryer to heat the other screen and remove the other screen. Before disconnecting the flex cable of the screen, you should remove this small bracket that is on top of the flex cable and after that you can simply pull the flex cable, it is going to be disconnected from the motherboard. This is the new screen and I do not really like what they did with this screen. All this plastic stuff that are attached to the flex cable make it very easy to break the flex cable while trying to remove these plastic stuff. So if you get the same screen, make sure that you take your time and you're careful while trying to remove all this plastic that is on top of the flex cable. You need to be very careful because a small cut on the flex cable is going to damage the screen. Currently I have installed the flex cable of the new screen on the motherboard and I'm going to turn the device on and see how the new screen react. You can see the new screen is lighting up as opposed to the old screen which was completely dead and it wasn't working or reacting to anything. 
you need to test the screen for touch response make sure that the screen works properly and it doesn't have any ghost touch and it doesn't have any issues with touch screen also play with the brightness to make sure that the brightness can go up to maximum and minimum you can also go inside the camera app to make sure that the other screen is working while you're trying to preview your photos so currently we know that the new screen is working properly so the next step is going to be cleaning the other screen area in order to prep it for the installation of the new screen you need to remove all the double sided tape that is still on the other screen area and also clean all the debris all the dust everything that is on the other screen area before the installation of the new screen for the cleaning you can simply use a flat metal tool to remove all the double sided tape that are still on the body of the device for the debris dirt and dust you can use a small brush in order to remove all those it is extremely important to clean the area where you're going to install the new screen because if you do not do this it might have an impact on the longevity of your screen and you might even have the screen getting separated from the body of the device after a few months so i have cleaned everything out of the other screen area and you can see it is pretty clean now there is nothing left on the area where the new screen is going to sit so right after that there is something that you need to do before the installation the final installation of the screen you need to go inside the camera app with the screen installed and make sure that the screen is seeing correctly the camera is seeing clear and you do not have any issues with the front facing camera if you find the video helpful and interesting consider subscribing it means a lot and it will help our channel grow more since the seller didn't provide any double sided tape for the reinstallation of the screen i'm going to use b7000 you can see i have added a layer of b7000 on the area where the screen is going to sit the flex cable of the screen is connected to the motherboard and the bracket has been installed it is time to reinstall the screen on the body of the device for the reinstallation of the screen make sure that you perfectly align the body of the device with the screen and after that you can start to apply some pressure on the screen for it to start to stick on the body of the device the challenging part with b7000 with the galaxy z fold 3 4 and 5 is going to be on the top of the device where you have the front facing camera and the speaker on that area you need to have a small layer of b7000 in order to not obstruct the camera or the speaker if your screen replacement came with a double sided tape pre-installed or a new double sided tape you can simply use that and not use a b7000 liquid glue after the installation of the screen since this is a liquid glue you need to have the screen in place with a little bit of pressure applied on the screen for the pressure stuff i'm using these repair clamps the clamps were too small for the hinge mechanism area this is why i'm using some paper binding clamps in order to have pressure applied in that area after 10 to 20 minutes i can remove all the clamps and start using the device but you need 24 hours for the glue to be solidly cured share like and subscribe see you next time